what's going on guys it is Panjana here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the 2020 ultimate guide to the Nvidia control panel settings. Inside of this video we're going to be going through all of the Nvidia control panel settings showing you guys the best settings depending on which graphics card you have installed to your machine to allow you to completely optimize your graphics card at the driver level to ensure that you guys are getting the best visuals and performance with inside of the games and making sure that everything is set up correctly. If you guys have seen my previous guide to the Nvidia control panel settings make sure that you do follow along with this video or if you've never seen any of my videos before make sure that you do stick around and watch all of the steps with inside of this video as there's been a plethora of updates to the Nvidia drivers, adding in brand new highly anticipated features alongside many bug fixes and many of the settings have changed from my previous video. As always guys if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results please do leave a like on the videos it helps me out tremendously alongside leaving any results, questions, queries or suggestions in that comment section down below it is always fantastic to hear from you guys and if you guys do enjoy my content and wish to stay up to date with the channel please do consider pressing the subscription button and the notification bell to be notified instantly of whenever I upload. So to kick things off, first thing you need to do is actually make sure which graphics card you have installed to your PC. To do this, it's very simple and easy to do. Right click anywhere on your desktop and you should be seeing the NVIDIA control panel settings. If you guys see Radeon control panel settings or AMD Radeon settings, there is a separate video which can be found in the description down below for any AMD or Radeon users, so make sure that you follow along with that guide as you've come to the wrong video. But for anyone running an NVIDIA graphics card, you should be seeing the NVIDIA control panel. If you guys don't see the NVIDIA control panel, don't panic, it just means that we don't know which graphics card you have installed yet, so you can simply skip this step. But for any of you who are unsure which graphics card you have installed, open up the NVIDIA control panel, navigate to the top left hand side to the help tab, click on help, then go down to system information. After a few short moments, the system information tab will open up. On the far left hand side, you should see items and you'll see the graphics card in which you have installed listed on the left hand side. For me, I'm using a GeForce RTX 2080 for this video. So now that I know which graphics card I have installed, I can exit out of both the NVIDIA control panel and the system information and we can navigate into the description down below and you'll find the NVIDIA GeForce driver link. Once you guys have clicked on the link, this will then link you to the latest GeForce drivers for any NVIDIA graphics card out there. It's incredibly important that you update to the latest GPU driver as there's been a plethora of fixes and tons of additional content and settings available in the latest drivers. So if you guys haven't updated your GPU driver in a while, it is highly recommended that you update around about once every three months or so to ensure that you guys are running on the most optimized and bug free drivers. Once you guys are inside of the GeForce page, for you guys who are not sure which graphics card you have installed, simply select the automatic driver updates utility found here, select download, it will download a program, install it to your PC, it will then automatically detect and install the latest driver for your graphics card. If you guys do know which graphics card you have installed, you can use the manual search found here at the bottom. So for me, I'm going to be going into the drop down menu for the GeForce RTX, going to the 20 series as that's the graphics card I have, selecting the 2080 Super, my operating system, my language and start search. Once you guys have done that, you'll then find the latest GPU driver found here. Click on the game ready driver, navigate up to the download button under the download page and on the bottom left hand side, as you'll see, the driver will then be downloaded. To install the driver, it's very simple and easy to do. Once it's finished downloading, simply open it up and it will automatically install the latest driver. Once you guys have installed the driver, it's incredibly important that you actually restart your PC by going to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows key, right clicking on the power option and selecting restart just to make sure that the latest driver is properly running with inside of Windows and you're good to go. It's incredibly important that you update your GPU driver at the beginning of this video as these optimizations will actually be reset every time you update your GPU driver. So assuming you guys are now running on the latest Nvidia driver, simply then go ahead and right click on your desktop and you should now be seeing the Nvidia control panel. Once inside of the Nvidia control panel, we're going to start off with the left hand side. We're going to go from the top to the bottom, starting off with the adjust image settings with preview. With inside of here, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the middle option, selecting use the advanced 3D image settings and then press apply. Once you guys have selected that, navigate to the Manage 3D Settings tab on the left hand side. And this is going to be the most important tab within inside of this entire video. Make sure that you follow along with these options as closely as possible. Some of them might be a slight bit different depending on which graphics card you have and if the options are available to you, but do follow these as closely as possible. So to start off with image sharpening, if you have the image sharpening option available, you should definitely use this as this will enhance the visuals on DirectX 9, 10, 11 and 12 games. Going into the settings options, turning this on, allowing sharpen to be set to around about 50% with an ignore film grain of 0.17. And if you guys have supporting graphics cards and have the options available to you, make sure that you do enable the option for GPU scaling as this will enable a bunch of custom resolutions with inside of games which will scale natively to your monitor's native resolution. For example, if your monitor is a 1080p monitor, this will allow you to play games at a lower resolution than 1080p and properly upscale the game to your monitor's 1080p native resolution. This is especially good for some of you guys running on lower end graphics cards or if you wish to get the best fps possible in most games you play you should always have this option enabled even if you don't wish to use it you should always have this enabled if you can next up is going to be ambient occlusion ambient occlusion is going to be recommended to set to the performance option anastropic filtering is going to be set to application controlled 
Anti-aliasing FXAA, I'd recommend turning to the off position. Anti-aliasing Gamma Correction, turning this on. Anti-aliasing Mode should be set to Application Controlled. Anti-aliasing Transparency should be switched to off. CUDA GPUs should be set to all. And that now brings us down to DSR Factors, which is Dynamic Super Resolution. This allows you to play games and render them at a higher resolution than your native monitor supports, allowing you to play 1440p, 4K, up to 8K on a 1080p monitor. Or if you're running on a 4K monitor, you could upscale all the way up to around about 8K, or as far as your GPU will allow you to render. For most people, I wouldn't recommend using this option, especially assuming most people watching this video are looking for the best settings in terms of performance and visuals. And DSR is really just there for some of you who like to play single player games and want the best visual experience possible. If you are going to to enable DSR factors, I'd recommend turning on two times and four times only. But for most of you watching this video, I wouldn't recommend using this and unchecking everything with inside of here, pressing OK and that will switch it to off. If you guys do set up DSR factors, it's recommended that you set your DSR smoothness to 0% or at most 10%. You can play around with that, it's personal preference, but I'd recommend turning that all the way to zero. And that brings us down to low latency mode, which is one of the most important options with inside of here. For low latency mode, if you guys are capable of getting over about 80 FPS in most games, I'd recommend switching this to the on position, as this will drastically help you decrease input lag with inside of the game, allowing the game to feel a lot more snappier and responsive, and can also help out boost your FPS. Underneath low latency mode, that now brings us down to max frame rate. With inside of here, I recommend switching this to the off position, unless you guys are wanting the smoothest experience possible. If you guys do want the smoothest experience possible, it's recommended switching this to the on position, and setting this to match your monitor's refresh rate. If you guys are running on a 240Hz monitor, set this to 240. If you're running on a 144Hz monitor, set this to 144. Do bear in mind that games will not run past this FPS, and this FPS will be a hard cap at a driver level, allowing you guys for a lot faster frame times and more stable frame times, so you'll be left with a more stable game. But for most of you watching this video, I would recommend turning this off. Monitor technology, if G-Sync is available to you with inside of here, you can use it if you wish to do so. There is a brief explanation on the right hand side of the screen now, which will basically sum up how G-Sync works. For me, I'm running on a 240 hertz monitor, so I don't wish to use G-Sync, and I'm gonna be using fixed refresh. Navigating down to multi-frame sampled AA, I'm gonna be switching this off for the best FPS possible. Navigating down to the OpenGL rendering GPU, switching this off of auto select and selecting the graphics card on which we have installed. Power management mode, again, this is one of the most important options with inside of here for ensuring that you guys are getting the best FPS and the most stable FPS possible, change this off of optimal power and switch it to prefer maximum performance. Under the preferred refresh rate option, I'd recommend switching this off of application controlled and selecting this to highest available. Shader cache should be switched to the on position. Texture filtering anastropic sample optimization should be switched to on. Texture filtering anastropic sampling optimizations should be switched to the on position. Texture filtering negative LOD bias should be set to allow. Texture filtering quality should be switched off of quality and set to high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization should be switched to on. Threaded optimization should be set to auto. Triple buffering should be turned off. For vertical sync, we're gonna be going inside of the 3D option and switching this to off. And last but not least, going down to the bottom to virtual reality pre-rendered frames and setting this to one. And that concludes the best settings. Once you guys have got all of those options set up correctly, take yourself to the bottom right hand side and click the apply button. We can then take ourselves over to the left hand side once again to configure surround. With inside of here, go to the physics settings, go to processor, go to the drop down menu and select your graphics card once again. Make sure that you press apply after setting all of these changes. We can then navigate over to the change resolution tab. Starting off by selecting our main monitor on the left hand side, you may have more than one monitor connected to your PC and you'll see them all listed here. We're going to start off by going over to our main monitor, selecting the highest resolution under the PC category available. For me, that's going to be 1920 by 1080 and ensuring that you've got your refresh rate set up correctly by going to the drop down menu and select Selecting the highest refresh rate with inside of here. For me, I have 240 hertz. You can then scroll all the way down to the bottom, come down and select the option for use NVIDIA color settings. Make sure this is set to full in the bottom right hand side and press apply. Make sure that you accept the changes by selecting yes. We can then navigate back over to the left hand side to adjust desktop color settings. With inside of here, it's recommended that you go down to the bottom to the apply the following enhancements. Go to the digital vibrance tab and I recommend bumping this up from 50%. I personally like the value of 80 as it makes everything look a lot more vibrant, adds a lot of saturation to colors, as my monitor is typically very washed out from stock. So tune this to your personal preference. Once you've selected a value you're happy with, I make sure that you go to the bottom right hand side and apply that value. For the rotate display tab, this can be changed if you wish to do so, especially for other monitors. It means you can actually set them to port portrait mode, but we're going to be ignoring this for the optimization video. We can then skip all of the following options on the left hand side and going down to adjust desktop size and position. We're then going to head over to the adjust desktop size and position tab. 
With inside of here, it's important that you go to the scaling mode and you can set any of the scaling modes available with inside of here. For most people, you're going to be wanting to set this to either aspect ratio or full screen if you wish to have whatever game it is at any resolution fill the entire screen. But for any of you guys that run on pixel art games or games that run in a much lower resolution, if you want them to look at their best, there's a fantastic option available to you in the latest GeForce drivers, which is actually going to be the integer scaling option found with inside of here. This will help properly scale the pixels from lower resolution games to your monitor's native resolution, making older, lower end games look a lot better on modern hardware. For you guys that run on the native resolution to your monitor all of the time with inside of every single game you play, you might actually get the best performance by selecting the no scaling option. So depending on your use case, select any of the options with inside of here. Make sure that you do select the GPU scaling to be performed on the GPU. Override the scaling mode set by games. Change your resolution to any resolution you wish to do so, but I do recommend keeping this native and make sure that your refresh rate is set to the highest possible. Once you guys are done with inside of there, navigate to the bottom right hand side and press apply. Then navigating over to the left hand side to set up G-Sync, if you have this option available to you, I recommend turning this off for high end gaming PCs running above 144Hz. If you guys have a decent graphics card and a decent refresh rate monitor, G-Sync is not recommended as it will add a slight input latency and it's completely unnecessary. If you guys are running on lower end graphics cards and running on 144Hz or below, you might find that enabling G-Sync actually allows for a much smoother experience. So. Low to medium end PCs, use G-Sync. Medium to high end PCs, it's recommended that you turn this off. Unless you're using a 1440p or 4K monitor and are outputting your games at that resolution, then I would keep G-Sync enabled. With inside of these setup multiple display tabs, you can set up all of your displays here to be changed in terms of priority. And you can also change the affinity of the displays in the screen below. Let's say if you have a second monitor that sits to the left of your normal monitor and you want that to behave correctly, you'll see a number two box with inside of here and you'll simply drag the number two box to the left hand side if your secondary monitor is to the left of your main display. If your secondary monitor is above, you can set the second monitor monitor and drag the box to the top of the number one box, or you can set it to the right hand side, or any way you wish to do so depending on where your secondary monitors are. Once you guys have got that set up, if you wish to set that up, go ahead and press apply once again. Then finishing up and coming down to the adjust video color settings, and starting off with using the Nvidia settings. With inside of here once again, go to the advanced tab, come off of limited, and go to full 0 to 255, and press apply once again. Once you guys are done with inside of there, you can then go ahead and exit out, and it's recommended that you quickly restart your machine just to ensure that all of the settings have been applied properly to the driver, and the driver is running them successfully. And there you guys have it. That is the 2020 ultimate guide to setting up your NVIDIA control panel settings. If you guys are looking for further optimizations and performance bumps to graphics cards, make sure that you do check in the description down below and you'll see the ultimate GeForce experience settings going down to the icon tray, right clicking on the driver and selecting the NVIDIA GeForce experience. You'll also find one of the most efficient videos to optimizing and bumping up performance of your graphics card in the description down below as well, which will take the form of the ultimate GPU overclocking guide, which I put on my channel around about a year and a half ago. It is still one of the best and most successful GPU overclocking guides out there. It's incredibly easy to follow. It's incredibly safe, and it's highly recommended that every single person watching this video follows along with that guide for a 5 to 25% performance increase in every single game you play. GPU overclocking, especially on NVIDIA cards, is completely easy and safe to do. You can't push the card past its limits and cause any long-term damage, and it's incredibly educational as well. So if you do have the spare time and you want to get the best performance possible, do check out the videos in the description down below. As always, guys, if you guys did enjoy this video and are happy with the results, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Alongside leaving any tips, tricks, results, questions, or queries in that comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy my content, please do consider pressing the subscription button and the bell notification to be notified instantly of whenever I upload. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, guys. I've been Panjano, and I'll see you in the next one.